concern over the Omicron variant of the coronavirus, which is leading to new travel restrictions, including for U.S. citizens. Our lead national correspondent, David Begno, is at JFK Airport in New York with more on that. And he's also got an inside look on how scientists are working to understand this new strain. David, good morning. Nate, good morning. The CDC is going to be increasing testing surveillance at the arrivals terminals for four of the nation's busiest airports. We're talking Atlanta, San Francisco, Newark, and John F. Kennedy, where we are this morning here in New York City. Also, within the next 24 hours, we expect an announcement that's going to affect just about anybody traveling to the U.S. Late last night, the CDC confirmed they are working to modify the testing requirements for travel into the United States. Right now, travelers have to be tested within 72 hours of departing to go to the United States. But the White House may soon announce that travelers be tested one day before boarding flights, regardless of their vaccination status or the state of COVID in the country that they're coming from. In the U.S., the message is consistent. Get vaccinated. Get your booster. Do it now. Get vaccinated. Get your booster. Do it now. They are really coming at everyone right now, full court press. The war for our minds has elevated to another level. In the United States in particular, you can see that they want us completely distracted, driven in fear and in anger. We have had constant provocations in the media with fears about COVID, while they have put constant distractions in our face to keep our minds occupied with the smallest things that really mean nothing. They want our minds distracted, and that should be abundantly clear for those with their minds awake paying attention. From distractions about Kyle Rittenhouse, a trial that didn't need the national attention that it got, to Ahmad Arbery, once again, aiding the black community and feeling like the country is working towards justice and equality. I mean, this week, we have the stupid news about Chris Cuomo being suspended. Like, it actually matters. In regards to that, listen, don't follow this news. These people are simply coming off of their assignments. They are giving us excuses why we won't be seeing these people any longer, because their purpose and roles are over. If you are paying attention, you will see that there are many people in many different positions resigning at this time. Over this past year or so, we have seen many prominent people leaving their post. Fed presidents resigning, CEOs quitting, politicians retiring, not seeking re-election. This is all about people preparing for the Great Reset, and those in the know are preparing while they keep the rest of the world in the dark, distracted, unprepared. I make these type of videos to be a wake-up call for the body, to counteract the methods of our enemy. We will not stay asleep and follow their agendas to push us in their reactionary traps. We will live with our eyes open, strong, and awake, living through the power of our Messiah, and resting on him all of our days. In understanding this info, this will keep your mind alert, allowing you to stay physically, mentally, and above all, spiritually prepared. Let's begin. Okay, well, we should start with the biggest point. There's growing global alarm over Omicron, the new coronavirus variant that first emerged in South Africa. Researchers say it could be the most infectious form of the virus so far, and it might even beat current vaccines. The international response has been swift. Many countries have shut down air travel from South Africa itself. The bans also extend to other Southern African nations, including Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique. The South African government says the closures are an overreaction. Omicron has moved quickly. Now countries around the world are racing to get ahead of it, banning flights from the region where the variant was first discovered. South Africans suddenly find themselves cut off from the world. You know, it's so funny how those that have been trusting the world in their solutions are getting carried away in these agendas. They have been working methodically, going through the Greek alphabet, raising the alarm bells, whenever it seems like things were about to get back to normal. It's like they keep dangling the carrot in front of the donkey. I don't have conversations right now with many that took the solution. So I really don't know how they feel about these new events. Are they scared again or are they over it? At this point, it doesn't matter really because they're already deep in the agenda. 
In many of my videos this year, I repeatedly have said things are not going back to normal. But because people are so desperate to hold on to the lives they once had, they are being led into very deceptive traps. We now have this new variant that we are told we need to concern ourselves with. They will not let the world stop living in fear. This was to be expected though for anyone paying attention and not being led by the God of this world. They will now go ahead for the next few weeks and escalate things, provoking people into fear. And in Colorado, a fully vaccinated woman who was eligible for a booster but hadn't received one. Yes. A fully vaccinated woman who was eligible for a booster but hadn't received one. Yes. Day by day, they will continually increase the narrative and sound more alarm bells for the masses. This name will continuously be in everything that you hear. In my last video before this one, I explained how my family has dealt with this pandemic since the beginning. And it still applies to this day. We choose not to participate. And we will definitely not let ourselves get distracted by this. And that's why we are starting here first in this video. Do not be distracted. Do not give your mind over to their agendas. Don't keep studying their lies. There must come a point in time where your strength and Messiah allows you to ignore the nonsense and live with your blinders on. When I hear this news, it is just confirmation to me about where things are going in this world and how much they want everyone distracted from it. So while they keep the masses' minds locked on this current variant agenda and these other small moving parts like with Trump and irrelevant news about China, they keep moving behind the scenes, pushing the world to the brink, readying it for change. If you allow your mind to stay attached to them, it will only lead you into destruction and not being mentally ready for what is coming at you. Now for me, as I read through the American major news outlets, you can see just how lost and distracted they really want the public to be. The international news outlets at least cover important news stories about geopolitics and provocations of war. As I scan CNN, the news is so silly. It's pointless and an obvious distraction if you know what is going on outside of what they are telling us to know and think about. Now don't misunderstand me. The media does cover certain details about these events. They are good to make sure that they implant the narrative that things are escalating, but they do not leave the masses with the proper mindset to be expectant or prepare for conflict, and therefore people don't really understand what these conflicts would mean for the world, and even more specifically for the United States. So yes, of course, we can find small reports on this, but the level of intensity of warning the public is not even close to the magnitude that they use to warn about their other agendas like the one I just spoke on. So now that I've spoken about not being distracted, let me show you what they're distracting everyone from. China's massive investment in the People's Liberation Army PLA, may show China is preparing to fundamentally change the status quo and preparing for a possible war with the United States over Taiwan. To deter China, the United States must rapidly build up its forces in the Pacific, continue to strengthen military alliances and deploy troops in the region to ensure access to bases in times of conflict and accelerate deliveries of purchased military equipment to Taiwan. If China were to attack Taiwan, they likely would use a massive cyber and electronic warfare attack to paralyze the island. They would combine this with missile strikes against key military and government centers to decapitate Taiwan's leadership. The PLA also would use special forces assaults and airborne and sea landings to attempt to defeat Taiwan rapidly. Prolonging effective Taiwan resistance until U.S. forces arrive should be a key goal of U.S. security policy. President Biden on at least three occasions has said the U.S. would defend Taiwan if it were attacked by China. His administration needs to articulate to the American people why Taiwan's defense is critical to the United States and deploy the resources needed to deter China from attacking Taiwan. Um, uh, what we're seeing is uh, China testing uh, a range of new missile systems uh, that can strike warships at sea 
And so what the Chinese are trying to do is hold at risk uh, US Navy aircraft carriers, allied naval vessels, including Australian naval vessels, with what's known as anti-ship ballistic missiles. And these uh, test mock-ups in the desert are really designed to test those new types of missiles. Should we be surprised to think that China has somehow been able to get its hands on the intelligence to be able to essentially copy what the US is doing? Well, in fact, um, the anti-ship ballistic missiles that we're talking about are new. The US does not have these capabilities. Uh, so it is a new type of weapon uh, and it has the US concern because the US does not have an equivalent capability. So the Chinese have developed this all by themselves. Uh, and they have already operationally deployed two types of these missiles, the DF-21D and the DF-26, with the latter able to strike ships as far out as Guam from China. And so what that means is that the Chinese can strike at our naval vessels at sea out to 5,000 uh, kilometres, which is a fair range and certainly would bring Australian naval vessels under threat. So yes, we should be concerned. All right, 27 Chinese aircraft entered Taiwan's air defense buffer zone on Sunday. That according to Taiwan's defense ministry. Now, Taiwan says they've identified the aircraft to include 18 fighter jets, five H-6 bombers, and one aerial refueling plane. Now, this as Chinese President Xi Jinping met with top brass at a military conference and called for, quote, talent cultivation among the military's ranks. So for more on this, let's bring in our friend, former Pentagon official Mike Maloof. Uh, so Mike, they, there have been almost daily flyovers by China into Taiwanese territory since September. So it's been going on for months. Uh, this may have been the one to fly closest to shore. China doesn't deny this buzzing, we'll call it. What is the intent of this action? Is it Intimidation? Well, it's, of course it's intimidation. It's coming at a time when uh, what China is seeing now are other countries, uh, particularly the United States, bringing in lawmakers. And uh, just the other day, uh, Baltic countries, uh, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, uh, pledged support to Taiwan. So there seems to be a trend uh, away from uh, uh, Beijing and recognition of a depend in of, of, of a country that a democratic country. Now the thing also is that what has also heightened this is that the leadership in Taiwan has announced that they 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 want independence, and that of course is it d does not full fit. independence. Full independence. So that that's something that uh, the leadership in China Beijing does not want, and so this is harassment and uh, and and of course the United States. Is, is sending in more yeah. military assistance. So this is this is the other aspect of it. So it's a and, and at a time when the United States also is pushing more uh, uh, positioning within the Indo-Pacific yeah, region. We've, we've definitely pivoted oh, yes. to the Pacific. Oh yes, and Since we just Biden can't wait for the office. Middle East to break out in, in peace so yes. we can focus on, <laughs> the, right. on the Indo-Pacific. That's, right. That's right. You see, this has been increasingly escalating for a few years. This engineered conflict is growing to enormous proportions. China has made it clear that they believe Taiwan is theirs, and they do not want any countries like the United States interfering in this matter. And the United States is taking the position that they will not allow China to take over Taiwan. What you do have to worry about is whether or not they're going to engage in activities that will put them in a position where they may make a serious mistake. And so I have had I have spoken and spent more time with Xi Jinping than any other world leader has. That's why you have, you know, you hear people saying Biden wants to start a new Cold War with China. I don't want a Cold War with China. I just want to make China understand that we are not going to step back. We are not going to change any of our views. So are you China. saying that, that the United States would come to Taiwan's defense if yes, China we, attacked? Yes, we have a commitment. So China has been making their wartime plans and developing their weapons and arsenal. I mean, just last month, there were reports of them testing a new hypersonic missile. A report of a Chinese missile test, which shows progress with an advanced weapon called a hypersonic missile. Our foreign correspondent James Longman is tracking the story from London. Good morning, James. 
Yeah, good morning, George. This demonstrates a huge step forward in China's military capability. And it's understood that U.S. intelligence had no idea that China had moved this far ahead. Now, all this is according to a report Britain's Financial Times newspaper. And they say that this summer, China managed to launch a nuclear-capable hypersonic missile. They launched it into space. It circled the Earth before cruising towards its target. Now, these missiles, they can travel at five times the speed of sound. They can fly lower than conventional missiles, and they can also be maneuvered in the air, which makes them very difficult to trace. So, bottom line, all this essentially means China is close to being able to launch a nuclear warhead against any other nation without any warning, and there'd be no defense against it. If you notice, they're explaining that China has an advantage over the United States. This narrative is subtle, and it is not really in the minds of the general public. But they've made it that the news media can't be blamed for not telling everyone. But do you know what China has done? They have gone so far as warning their citizens to prepare for rough times ahead, prepare for emergencies. telling their citizens to be prepared for hard times and emergencies. Yeah. Now, what is the United States doing on this? Yes, the United States is continuing moving in with their provocations, ignoring the warnings from China and doubling down on their intent to guard Taiwan. Today, U.S. officials calling for more aircraft carriers in the Pacific to thwart China. According to the Wall Street Journal, the commander of the U.S. Navy's 7th Fleet has called for more aircraft carriers in the Pacific to dissuade China and Russia from conflict. Vice Admiral Carl Thomas spoke Tuesday as the U.S., Japan, Australia, Canada and Germany completed a 10-day naval exercise led by Japan in the Pacific waters. The South China Sea in particular has been a major arena for confrontation between China and the U.S. Beijing also embroiled in a series of territorial disputes with members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations and has been building up its military infrastructure in recent years. This while a Pentagon review of military resources worldwide plans to make improvements to airfields in Guam and Australia to counter China, expanding a previously announced deployment of fighter and bomber aircrafts. Still, though, defense officials say the so-called Global Posture Review contains no major shakeup of forces as the U.S. moves to take on Beijing while deterring Russia and fighting terrorism in the Middle East and in Africa. And, and on top of that provocation, President Biden is making sure that they keep China provoked in knowing that they are interfering in this Taiwan matter. I've seen a lot of international news covering this, but not so much in the United States. In a move that will most likely anger China, U.S. President Joe Biden has invited Taiwan to its Summit for Democracy next month. According to the U.S. State Department, the summit is expected to focus on three principal themes, that is, defending against authoritarianism, fighting corruption, and promoting respect for human rights. It aims to help stop the erosion of rights and freedoms worldwide, the invitation for Taiwan comes as China has stepped up pressure on countries to downgrade or severe relations with the island, which China views as its own. There are 110 no. participants on the invitation list for the virtual event on 9th and 10th of December. The majority of invitees, 77 countries, rank as free or fully democratic, according to the Freedom House 2021 report. Notably, China and Russia have not been invited. And from this... China has made condemning words on it. China坚决反对美方邀请台湾当局参加所谓 领导人民主峰会，世界上只有一个中国，中华人民共和政府是代表全中国的唯一合法政府。台湾是中国领土不可分割的一部分。至于领导人民主峰会，我们以多次表明立场，民主是全人类共同价值，不是少数国家的专利
为台独势力搭台，只会让自己下不来台。与台独一起玩火。You see, they are on wartime footing. Both sides are continuously posturing, preparing for war. All of this are war moves, and unfortunately, the general public will not be ready for it until the first shot is fired or first missile has hit. But they do not want you prepared for it, or even with the mindset of what to do if it happens. This is why they keep the general public distracted. Now, in Eastern Europe, the same thing is happening. Uh, we have real concerns about uh, Russia's unusual military activity on the border uh, with Ukraine. These movements certainly have our attention, and Russian forces close to Ukraine's、uh, border. Aerial images shared by the United States have sparked concerns of a potential Russian invasion of Ukraine. In recent weeks, evidence has emerged of an estimated 100,000 Russian troops building up on Russia's western border. Ukraine says that Moscow is preparing a sea and ground attack from Russian annexed Crimea and the Donbas region. Kiev has been fighting Russian-backed separatists there since 2014. The Kremlin denies it plans to invade. We need to remain vigilant and avoid escalation. Ministers made clear any future Russian aggression would come at a high price. And have serious political and economic consequences for Russia. Ministers made、uh, clear that we stand by our decisions. Our support for their sovereignty and territorial integrity remains unwavering.、Uh, and the message is that it's only Ukraine and 30 NATO allies that decides when Ukraine is ready to join NATO. Russia has no veto. Russia has no say, and Russia has no right. To establish a severe influence, trying to control their neighbors. We don't know whether President Putin has made the decision to invade. We do know that he is putting in place the capacity to do so on short order, should he so decide. So, despite uncertainty about intentions and timing, we must prepare for all contingencies, while working to see to it that Russia reverses course. We've made it clear to the Kremlin that we will respond resolutely, including. With a range of high-impact economic measures that we've refrained from using in the past, we call on all sides to restore the ceasefire to July 2020 levels. Taking into account the gravity of the threat that a potential new Russian invasion in Ukraine poses, the European continent may be at a very critical juncture right now. And while all this war posturing is happening, on the other side, Putin has said he hopes that the United States doesn't cross his red line. Follow the timeline. President Putin has warned the West not to cross what he called a red line with Russia, stating that it would trigger an asymmetrical, rapid, and harsh response. This was Vladimir Putin's 17th State of the Nation address. He used it to portray his country as a besieged fortress, threatened by the West, and he warned, "Don't mess with Russia." I hope no one will cross Russia's red line. But in each case, we are the ones who will decide where the red line is. Organizers of any provocation threatening our security will regret it, like they haven't regretted anything for a long time. Well, Vladimir Putin is also now calling recent military actions by the United States in the Black Sea. Quote, provocative. This address comes as Putin was meeting with foreign policy officials in Moscow. Now, during the address, he highlighted that relations with the U.S. and NATO are at an all-time low, and that wasn't always the case. Saying in the past, situations were once cooperative. Putin noted that NATO has been pushing closer and closer to Russia's border, essentially ignoring Russia's interests. Listen here. Regarding the Black Sea, the latest absolutely goes beyond certain limits. We've seen strategic bombers fly 20 kilometers from our state border, and these bombers carry very serious weapons, as you would know. Yes, we constantly express our concerns about this matter. We talk about red lines, but of course, we understand that our partners are very peculiar, and to put it mildly, they have a superficial attitude toward all of our warnings and talks about red lines. 
Now, Putin went on to say that he does want to keep a dialogue going with NATO and the U.S., adding that it seems that the only response he seems to be getting, though, is intimidation. This article says Putin has accused NATO of ignoring Russian warnings about red lines. Russian President Vladimir Putin accused NATO of ignoring Russian red lines in Ukraine and Eastern Europe a habit that he blamed for raising the risk of a new crisis tomorrow. Вот это создание таких угроз для нас и есть красные линии. Но я надеюсь, что до этого не дойдёт. Надеюсь, что чувство здравого смысла, так и ответственности и за свои страны и за мировое сообщество всё-таки будет преобладать. Would it you know? Russia themselves, like China, have been testing their own hypersonic missiles. Mind you, a weapon that they have been boasting about for about two years. President Vladimir Putin testing a new intercontinental missile and President Donald Trump's medal. From a Moscow command center, Putin watched the hypersonic missile leave its launch tube and, according to the Russians, strike a target 3,700 miles away, declaring it invulnerable to intercept. Russia says it can be armed with a nuclear weapon and travel up to 20 times the speed of sound. Without confirming the results of today's test, the Pentagon has acknowledged that America is vulnerable. We don't have a, any defense that could uh, deny the em employment of such a weapon a against us. Adding urgency to the Pentagon's own plan to develop an American version. Like I said, this conflict has been brewing for years. And if you've been watching these videos, these conflicts with China and Russia are not new to you. But for the rest of the masses, at least in the United States, most don't have a clear understanding of how deep this issue and narrative is and how close we all are from war. And like I showed earlier, the media has told us that we right now are not capable of defending ourselves against China or Russia. A top Space Force general warning the U.S. is lagging behind China and Russia in developing hypersonic defense technology. This as U.S. officials reportedly confirmed China's hypersonic missile test in July was more advanced than initially thought. Let's bring in Fox News. That David Thompson, he's the vice chief of space operations for the United States, says we are not as advanced as the Chinese or the Russians in terms of hypersonic programs. Is that a problem, General? Yeah, oh, it absolutely is, Dana. I mean... Now, whether or not these conflicts are real or not doesn't matter. It's all about the narratives, the storylines. That's what matters in this pretend world. The agenda has not changed. The old world order must collapse in order for the new world order to take hold. And in the United States, things are still bleak. From the supply chain issues stalling the economy to inflation increasingly getting higher by the month, we are at a time where the economics are just not sound. But again, because the news media is not properly explaining things, the masses are just not preparing and living with the right expectations. I mean, Fed Chair Jay Powell just this week admitted something big about inflation. For months, they have been saying that the inflation numbers were transitory, meaning temporary. But in a session of Congress with Janet Yellen, Jay Powell said, So I think the word transitory has different meanings to different people. To, to many, it carries a time, a sense of, uh, of short-lived. We, we tend to... to, to, to use it to mean that, that it won't leave a permanent mark uh, in, the, in the form of higher inflation. I think it's, it's probably a good time to retire that, that uh, word and try to explain more clearly what we mean. And in regards to supply chain issues, the government is doing silliness, literally acting as if they are doing something about these supply chain issues. Now, the Federal Trade Commission is ordering major retailers and grocery chains to turn over new information on their supply chain problems, requesting internal documents from Amazon, Walmart, Kroger, Tyson, and others to investigate the, quote, causes of empty shelves and sky-high prices. On Monday, President Biden met with CEOs of major retailers to discuss the crisis. But there is a lot going on behind the scenes here. And regardless of how the narrative turns out, you should understand that the United States is vulnerable from many different angles, and none bigger than economically and politically. Please don't ever forget about the debt ceiling issue that is still here. If you remember, a few months ago, I was warning about this. And then in October, they did a temporary bill to kick the debt ceiling issue down the road. And they said that they were giving the Democrats the opportunity to pass the legislation on their own. If they don't want to do the job, just get out of the way. 
We'll take the heat. We'll do it. We will do it. Let us do it. Well, since they signed it, there hasn't been much mentioned about the debt ceiling. And the time they were given to pass the legislation has passed, which I believe was just today, December 3rd. Now Janet Yellen has said that the U.S. has two weeks before it runs out of money, going over the same crisis that was just here two months ago. And here we are again. And a revised projection says the federal government is likely to run into problems paying its bills by December 15th. The original deadline to raise or suspend the debt ceiling was December 3rd. That came after lawmakers passed a short-term extension last month. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is urging Congress to move fast ahead of the new deadline or risk defaulting for the first time in U.S. history. Well, Melissa, December 15th is the deadline that Yellen gave to Congress, and today she testified that she can't guarantee what will happen after that. There's $118 billion that's due to the Highway Trust Fund on that date. And just a few moments ago, the CBO forecast that if Treasury makes that payment, it may run out of money before the end of the month. Now, our own debt limit tracker with the Bipartisan Policy Center shows that Treasury is already in the yellow zone. It has just $269 billion in cash and extraordinary measures left, that's roughly enough to last about two weeks or maybe even a little bit less. But remember, this is a dial. It can move backward as revenues come in and it can move forward as Treasury spends more money. And there are a couple of big bills that are due tomorrow, including $11 billion in veterans benefits and $6 billion each in military and civil service retirement payments. Now, Yellen has called for bipartisan support for raising the debt limit, and Democrats said that Republicans would be foolish not to listen. But Congress still is not working together and there appears to be no deal in sight. they are still playing massive games with our economic system, once again hurting confidence in the United States political system and their fiscal responsibility. No matter how you look at it all, there is a lot going on that the masses are not being prepared to handle. And instead of the media and government preparing us for possible missteps or emergencies, they tell us nothing to see here. This is all business as usual. And that those sounding alarms are just conspiracy theorists while other news medias around the world make articles with headlines like this. Minute to midnight, Russia and West, one mistake from nuclear conflict and most dangerous moment since Cold War, warns UK Admiral. The world is on edge, and they want you distracted from this. And that's why I have made this video. It's not to push fear on you and make you live in fear, but to bring reality to you and to help you see the narratives at play so that you can be ready for the event of any of these issues becoming a real risk to you. You see, they want you distracted, but you must be awake. They want you to be reactive, moving when they tell you it's time to move, hurting you like cattle, but you must be proactive, ready for the unexpected, and mentally able to deal with what is coming. But the truth of all this is always the same and never going to change. And as long as you are a believer, Living in Father's truth and resting in his arms, you know with a surety that none of this is about you. These events are moving us towards a great reset that leads to a new world order. It's about moving towards a time where Yah will test the whole earth. But if you persevere and follow Yeshua, these tests will not be for you, and he shall keep you from these tests. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. That's Revelation chapter 3 verse 10. Because the world isn't resting on their only answer, the way, the truth, and the life, they look at this information as fear-mongering or conspiracy theory. Yet this video is filled with information from their sources. You see, we are given a blessed hope, and as long as we live through him and for him, we know that there is nothing to fear because in the end, we are victorious. 
I made this video to emphasize to you that you cannot allow them to let you be distracted living in their false realities. Hope for the best, but be prepared for the worst. It's those that do not prepare that get swept right away into their strong delusions. These videos are all about keeping your mind out of it and living in the real world. They are going to collapse this world and push you into an alternative world in the metaverse. But don't dwell on these things. Live happy. Live free. Live in purpose in the blessings that our Father provides. Dwell on the love of our Father and the blessings He has provided you and what He is preparing for you. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. That's Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. You see, you do not need to dwell on these things to be prepared or ready. If you just learn to focus on Father and trust in Him, you do not need to know these things. But there are many of us that have a hard time turning off the outside world, and you are consistently led by the world into their distractions. Or sometimes you just have tuned things out so much you really don't know what is going on in the world. You must live with the right mindset, with the right expectations, not living in deception and not being led astray by wolves. Don't let them put their agendas right in front of you, distracting you while they prepare to remove the rug right from under you. Live in reality and do not be distracted. Live in the power our Messiah provides and be an overcomer. You must persevere. You must overcome. You must live through the power of our Messiah who dwells in you through the Holy Spirit. Live these last days in his presence, focused upon him and his promises. Hold your head up high throughout all this darkness and continue to proclaim his glory to the world as long as you are able to. Brothers and sisters, live as a believer, an overcomer. Be blessed. Okay. Thanks again for watching. I really hope this helps you. If this has blessed you and you think it will bless others, please don't forget to share this. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every week. Please don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I really would like to thank all those who support this ministry. You know who you are. Your contributions have been an extreme blessing to this ministry, and I'm very thankful for you. Thank you for being a blessing and your continued support to this mission. Okay, thanks again, everyone, for watching. I love you all.